Presbyterian, no other denominations. Um, all in favor of George being board, uh, okay. budget committee chair, second will include Liz. favor of that nomination, please raise, your, please raise your hand. Motion carries. Okay, so, I'll, I'll, I'll open it up to the... Um, point, of, point of order, really quick. Yes. That was really fast and not everybody raised their hand. So, for me to do minutes, <laughs> I apologize. Let's do it again slowly. Perfect. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, and then now I'll open it for uh, Vice Chairman. Three nominations. Can I say no thank you? You can. No thank you. Uh, well, seeing no others, I'll nominate uh, uh, the, the Tara again. She's done for the last few years. Sounds great. I'll I say, I'll sure see nothing. you over there, Tara. Right? <laughs> <laughs> she would have picked you over me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we're both awesome with numbers, okay? <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay. Uh, all in, well, is there a second? I'll second, second it. Okay. Uh, any other nominations, which we don't seem to have? <laughs> okay. Uh, seeing no other nominations, um, all in favor of Tara, raise your right hand, please. Okay, so um, now what is the review of the member terms and expiration dates? And we're all, we're all current, right? <laughs> so um, let's see, is, who isn't here on the budget committee? We are missing Shane Holm. Okay, and then I guess we'll just move on to the uh, uh, to Jennifer Collins for the budget process basics. Hi, um, hello. I'm Jennifer Collins, and I work at the ESD, but I am currently working on budget here in Rainier. <clears throat> okay, so to get started, I'm going to go through just um, some processes and just some one-on-one that we will. Um, just to get us started here. So there's our agenda. Okay, what is a budget? A budget is a financial plan. It's basically a best guessed estimate at a point in time that is subject to change with no information, or with new information and new needs. Um, a budget is for one fiscal year, and it is based on estimates of revenue and expenditures and other requirements. The budget is the basis for appropriations, which create the authority to spend public money. Now, the appropriations are very important as there are, there are ORSs that prohibit spending money unless authorized by local budget law. It is unlawful for any public official to spend money <clears throat> in excess of the amount provided by the law. What does the budget committee do? The budget committee receives the budget document. Um, we, the budget committee, the, it's available for public at the time, as soon as you guys get it, it's now available for the public. Um, the public has the right to inspect the budget, and we must provide means for public to, to copy the budget. The budget committee uh, will hear the budget message, prepare, prepared by or under direction of the executive officer or the superintendent. Um, the budget message explains the budget documents. The budget committee will, will explain the budget documents. Um, this describes financial policies, explains any changes since last year, must be in writing, and anyone can deliver it. The budget committee will hear and consider public comment on the date and time in the published notice. Any person may ask questions about and comment on the budget. The budget committee can establish time limits and other policies for pub public comment period and or additional meetings if desired. 
Uh, what does the budget committee not do? The budget d committee does not discuss individual employees, does not approve personnel contracts. The budget committee does not set salary schedules or benefits. And the budget committee does not um, direct pro program specifics or make staff placements. The budget committee can discuss and the budget committee discusses and revises, revises the budget as needed. Um, discuss and if a majority feels necessary, revise the proposed budget. Uh, the may, dis may reduce or increase the estimate of resources and requirements and may approve budget at first meeting or it may take several meetings. Question. Okay, and the budget um, committee approves the budget, and they will also approve the property taxes. Okay, starting with the budget stuff. What is a fund? A fund is a separate fiscal and accounting entity. It is used to separate out and account for specific resources used to carry on specific activities. Basically, it's like each fund is like a business that's books. It's like a separate um, set of books for each fund. Um, it's a complete set of self-balancing accounts. A fund has its own asset, liability, fund balance, revenue, and expense account. What do we use the fund system for? Um, it tracks accountability rather than profitability. Funds may be designated for a sp specified purpose and to ensure restricted resources are spent for their intended purpose. Many grants require specific detail reporting, so those are in a different fund. Fund types. General fund. <coughs> it's the default fund for the government funds, governmental funds account for and report all financial resources not accounted for in the other funds and it's the main revenue sources or I'm sorry the main revenue sources are property <coughs> taxes and state school funds special revenue <coughs> account for proceeds of specified revenue sources that are restricted or committed for specified purposes other than debt <coughs> services and capital <coughs> projects special revenue are basically our grants our student body accounts everything that's not in the general fund. The main revenue sources are the grants and the fees. Debt services account for financial resources that are restricted, committed, or assigned to the expenditure for principal and interest. Main revenue sources, general fund transfers and payroll fees. Capital projects account for financial resources that are restricted, committed, or assigned to expenditures for capital outlays. Main revenue sources, beginning fund balance. Proprietary funds used to account for activities that are similar to business operations in the private sector. Accounts for any activity for which a fee is charged to external users for goods and services. Rainier does not currently have any proprietary funds. Um, fiduciary funds. These are other people's assets that are being administered, managed by the district. They are not the district's assets. Trusts and agency funds, grants and gifts received to be used for <coughs> specified purposes such as scholarship funds. Main revenue source is private donations. Well, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. The budget message is designed to summarize and highlight points of special interest related to the budget for the 23-24 school year. Prior to adoption, the budget committee may recommend changes and or assign information gathering to the superintendent and the business manager in order to make informed decisions. This year, it's the goal of the Northwest Regional ESD business department and the superintendent to make the budget more transparent and to explain actual costs of various programs. Additionally, to ensure effective fiscal management, it's the goal of the Rainier School District to promote financial stewardship, sustainability, and stability. 
This can be accomplished through ensuring each program is self-sustaining rather than to borrow from general funds that are meant for K-12 education. Another way we plan to provide greater financial stability is to increase our availability of reserve funds as well as our projected ending fund balance from $1.8 million to $2.2 million. Prior to 2021, the Rainier School District historically operated without a financial safety net. In order to mitigate the negative effects of an unsure financial future, our goal last year was to have 15% in ending fund balance by 2023. Since 2020, at the direction of the board, the district has consistently increased its ending fund balance and reserves to ensure consistent operations without the risk of layoffs or spending freezes. This positive trend has enabled us to stabilize our staffing while enhancing our programs to students. Additionally, we've been able to mitigate the challenges of a lower state school fund through the use of special revenue funds, staff shortages, and responsible fiscal leadership. Increasing our revenues was the only way to ensure we would have a stable financial future. With the hard work of the district, we now have the reserves that enable us to maximize the revenues provided by the state and provide a full continuum of services and the staff to do so. One major strength of our Rainier community is that our citizens care deeply about our schools. The school district is a vital aspect of the entire community and the district operations impact every aspect of this community. As superintendent, it's my duty to provide a budget message that presents our financial portfolio, priorities, and improvement processes. The Rainier School District is optimistic about its financial future through intentional and thoughtful planning and programming. As we enter into this, the next fiscal year, we will continue to identify and address factors that could impact our finances. Some of the risk factors include, but are not limited to, an unclear direction from the state regarding final public school allocations, uncertainty of state, state funds for the purposes of summer school instruction, a stabilizing enrollment, program and staffing adjustments to support students while operating with fiscal responsibility, outdated facilities in need of improvement. These will be addressed through the passage or non-passage of bond and through an increase to our facilities budget, cost of recruiting and retaining quality teachers and staff, cost of professional development that will increase student achievement and professional learning, enhancements to our CTE and other student programs, and re review and adoption of updated curriculum to meet the varied needs of our students and community. So next I'll present some re revenue assumptions. The primary revenue source is the state school fund, which is distributed by the Oregon Department of Education. We are entering the first year of the biennium and Rainier School District is building its 2023-24 budget based on the following assumptions. This will be the first year of the biennium, which the allocation has not been finalized for. We're building our budget on the governor's proposed $9.9 .9 billion for K-12 funding. Typically, the biennium provides a 49-51 split for funding over the biennium, and we've developed this budget with that in mind. Revenues distributed by the state to school districts upon, uh, based upon an average ADMW, which stands for Average Daily Membership Weighted. Average Daily or ADMW is calculated based on actual enrollment. Currently, the 23-24 ADM is projected to be, or ADMW is projected to be 1,006.18. Revenue assumptions are currently based upon calculations using 833 ADMR or ADM real, the actual students in the building. Oregon looks at the past two years to determine revenue, and that's referred to as held harmless. Therefore, it will be funded on the 22-23 ADMW of 1,012.56. To ensure that the Rainier School District continues to provide the necessary services, quality instruction, and student programs, it will be necessary to consider the following modifications. Use of ESSER funds to support loss of learning and capital improvements that impact instruction. Use of general funds to support summer learning unless the state provides a summer learning grant. Whether through a grant or general fund, the summer learning supports enhanced uh, student learning and close, in closing the achievement gap. The 23-24 projected beginning fund balance is $2,279,798. Expenditure assumptions. Program costs for instruction, support, and administrative functions primarily consist of personnel-related expenses. Since we're entering into the third year of our collective bargaining agreements for licensed and classified staff, which determine salary schedules and benefit levels, we've made fairly accurate estimates for staffing costs. All staff, with the exception of our non-represented staff, will receive their annual step increase in addition to a 2% COLA. At this time, all school districts are faced with increased demands that affect our budgets and school programs. 
Many of these challenges are mandated by federal and state regulations or reforms, and some have become paramount due to the need to improve the academic success of all students. Some of the major initiatives that impact our current budget include an increase in health insurance by 5%. We've stabilized our staffing levels through the budget document, uh, although the budget document reflects a slight decrease. The Rainier School District had a total of 120.15 FTE in 2022-23 and will have 119.34 FTE in 2023-24. There have been no positions eliminated and one instructional assistant instructional assistant added to the budget. Mid-Columbia bus costs will increase slightly using the Consumer Price Index. Alignment with the Oregon Department of Education's curriculum review cycle to initiate a multi-year curriculum review and adoption process. Leverage state and federal grants to support intervention programs including virtual programming, summer school, intercession activities, and before and after school programs to close the achievement gap of our students. Our integrated guidance plan and budget was aligned uh, let me start over. Integrated guidance plan and budget to align our comprehensive strategic planning priorities for the 23-24 school year. School safety and facility concerns will continue to be an area of focus and the scope of those initiatives will be determined following the May election. We continue to modify and implement improvements to our social emotional learning and equity inclusion focus. CTE development and enhancements. Measure 98 will continue to address college readiness and career development through coursework and partnerships. Increased athletic budget to overhaul our athletic program with plans to continue to compensate coaches and assistant coaches in addition to a providing greater equity to support all co-curricular programs. Increased supply budgets at all schools to enhance music, art, and other programs. Overhaul of our current district fleet, vehicle fleet, and costs associated with purchasing replacement vehicles. Sub substantially increased, nearly doubled our capital improvement funds. We will see no increases to PERS rates for the 23-24 school year. We've increased the Briarcliff pool budget to more accurately reflect personnel costs. Increased professional development for staff through general fund allocation and grants as indicated through the integrated guidance application. And increased board professional development. Rainier School District has much to celebrate. With the pandemic, with the pandemic mostly behind us, we're now entering into a process of redefining normal. Our students of today face a much different reality than those of their predecessors. This means the district must continue to evolve with our students' needs. As evidence in our integrated guidance plan, we will continue to find ways to address anti, uh, not anti, will address social emotional learning, school climate, and increase clinical needs. We have continued to address our facility concerns and following the May election, we'll develop plans to reflect the will of the community. I'm happy that tonight I present to you a budget that is completely aligned to our board's previous goals and priorities. The overarching goals have been increased academic growth and success, ensure academic excellence by ensuring a, a well-rounded education, educational program with necessary resources, and provide a safe learning environment for all students. I'm excited to lead the district as we find ways to support higher levels of learning for our students, ensure our staff have the tools necessary to meet the academic, social, emotional, and nutritional needs of our students and engage with all stakeholders to continue to improve the district and become a model district in Oregon. It's an exciting time at Rainier School District. It's a time when we can celebrate all of our hard work and find comfort in the financial future of our district so that every child can receive the best possible education. This is a time when students can experience a robust summer program through Oregon Department of Education grants and community partnerships, a time when student achievement is emphasized through updated curriculum, access to interventions and academic support, and continued co-curricular and extracurricular opportunities that will meet the social emotional well-being of our students. While we've been successful in our organizational effectiveness, it was not without its challenges. A debt of gratitude is owed to our governing board, leadership team, classified and certified staff, and community. While change can be scary, all parties have exercised an openness to changing the way we've always done things and support a more sustainable, as well as rigorous and engaging academic program that will ensure students graduate from the Rainier School District as strong contributors to society. It is only when we challenge our current beliefs and practices that we can achieve our collective goal of providing a spirited learning community that is student-centered, safe, academically focused, and dedicated to preparing every student for success in the global society in which we live. 
Given the above stated revenue and expenditure assumptions, the Rainier School District projects the total general fund expenditure to be $12,945,162. With that, I'll turn it back over to Jennifer. Now we get to the fun stuff. All right. So, budget assumptions. Um, the governor budget um, of 9.9 .9 billion for 23-25 biennium. That's what we're basing our budget on um, for this year. Um, 5.9 million, that means 5.9 million of it is what we're um, assuming we're going to get, we should expect in our general fund. Um, our salaries increased per the CBA, they increased um, with a 2% uh, increase, plus they all stepped. Um, insurance, 5% increase, but our PERS rate, were unchanged. We're lucky there. <laughs> um, that's a good thing. Um, we have a slight enrollment decrease that we estimated. Hopefully, um, that won't happen, but it's looking like it's probably going to happen. Um, we weighed financial resources with student needs and presented a balanced budget to the budget committee. Okay. There is a big potential that these changes may be, may, um, that the budget may change with the governor's budget. The talk is it could be anywhere between 9.9 .9 and 10.3, but as of right now, we're going to go with 9.9. .9. Our general fund revenue increased by 461,810 compared to the 22-23 budget. Mainly, um, our local revenue increased. Our state fund, state school fund, is decreasing by about 151,000, um, but our property taxes went up and um, and we are, um, are projecting a, a higher beginning fund balance next year <coughs> so our general fund um, that we budgeted our expenditures um, we increased transfers to support other funds of um, the increases of about seventy five thousand dollars compared to last year's budget we also increased our purchase services on 315,993. Um, our supplies and materials we increased um, 184,200. And then other objects, 19,900. So the transfers to other funds, um, this is what we budgeted, co-curricular athletics, um, we, we increased that to 280,500. Um, Briarcliff Pool, we increased it to 160,000 um, mm -hmm. to cover some of the personnel costs. Food service, 189,000. Our bond, uh, QZAB bond, 55,500. Transportation fund, 100,000. And our capital improvement, we increased to, or we budgeted 175,000 for a total of 960,000. We um, took out the transfer for textbooks. The um, textbook costs are going to be moved to special funds this year. FTE comparisons, very, very slight. Um, we increased our instruction 2.9. Uh, and our support went down just a little bit. About the top is in the general fund. The, um, this is special revenue out of our grants. Um, we decreased our instruction there. And our support and community um, increased. All together, all over, all the funds total we actually decreased a 0.82 FTE, very minimal. What are we actually at for FTE now, though? That says just the adopted budget. Um, I, 
think we're right at 120.15. Okay. And that, correct me if I'm wrong, that 0 0.82 can be accounted for, honestly, um, data entry? Yeah, there was, um, yeah, it's a d data entry, um, yeah. <laughs> Meaning we had someone's position code change, and it didn't reflect in the game. Special revenue, it's pretty early in this process for us to know what our allocations next year for our grants or our special revenue is going to be. Um, we did get a Title I estimate, and that's going to increase about $18,800. Um, ESSA, it's too early. They won't even give you a guess. So we um, just kept it the same as what we have this year. Um, IDEA is the same way. Um, they just don't even give you estimations until it gets closer to... Um, to May. The SIA, we did know that um, it decreased just a little bit, um, but that also can change. This is just what, what they're planning on as of right now. This is just estimate. And then the little to no change, Title IIA, Title um, VII, uh, Medicaid, and Preschool Promise. Um, right now, the talk is that they should stay about the same. Other funds, debt services will follow the amortization schedules. Capital projects funds, we're transferring from the general fund if we need it. Um, and then agency funds, we have scholarships there. Potential changes. Um, the next state revenue forecast is due out in May. Um, let's hope that it's, it's a little bit more, um, but we'll know more in May. Each, um, each has their own changes until as a staff allocation, so um, we're all hoping. <laughs> And the next steps, um, our next meeting is May 8th. Um, that's where we'll take public comment. And we'll have questions, discussions, and deliberations. If you have any questions, we ask that you email them to us so that we, um, if there's research in involved in it, or um, so we can provide you with a more accurate answer. Jennifer, if I can interject there, mm -hmm. um, it would be great when you have questions, email both. So, and rather than or, mm -hmm. so that yeah. both of mm -hmm. us catch it. Where can we find the Briar Club pool again? Well, so, it would be I, great yeah. when you have questions, email that's, both. That's in the special so revenues, and, and I think or, it's fun so 275. Mm -hmm. Where can we find the Briar Club pool again? It's tested my memory. Ah, so, uh, yeah. Yes. In the two, upper 200s, 275. Two million two hundred some thousand. Um, uh, what do you call that? Beginning fund. Uh, yeah. Is there any extra money included in that, or is that just extra money? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, three more. No, that is just a general fund and fund balance. Do you have to know off the top of your head how much extra money we have left to spend? Mm -hmm. That's out. It's paid off of the corporate activity tax, I believe. Um, it's supposed to be sustainable every year, and they're really working on that. Um, but dollar-wise, just like everything else. What does it do? I mean, what's it's for? So it's oh. it's one of the state grants. It's supposed to be sustainable every year, and they're really working on that. What does it do? I mean, what's it for? So it's it's one of the state grants. Uh, so basically what happened five or so years ago is the legislature pulled out general fund money, put it in SIA with requirements. So it's the same revenues, but now this one is has specific requirements tied to it. So like I traditional mean, grant. I mean, like um, test scores or I mean? I mean no, no, no. The, the grants typically require uh, academic uh, programming, Interventions and so SIA used to be a standalone. Now it's part of it's one of five <coughs> grants that are reviewed through integrated guidance application, which every school in Oregon had to do this last year. So it's just tied to a school plan. Yeah. Um, so tonight's tonight's purpose is really to present and give um, everybody in this room about a month to review and send us your questions. Um, obviously, we still have some time, so we'd be happy to keep it open and answer any questions that we can. Um, but that concludes the presentation portion, so yeah, good job. Yeah. And we'll give you a few minutes to think through questions. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for um, doing this, serving on the budget committee. Yeah. So what does that exactly does that mean for the pool? That now if you said now there's a high school class, now it, it looks like yeah there's more salaries and stuff. What 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 did the pool move from before? It's always been in a special revenue fund. Correct. So now but we wanted to maximize the use and mm -hmm. the profitability. So part of it is staff for K-12 education. So that makes it much easier to um, pay for salaries under the general fund because it is used for K-12 education rather than just standalone. Oh, okay. um, but additionally, um, with the way that we've developed the staffing, it also continues to operate after school and, and weekend opportunities for revenue generation. So. Ooh. Kind of the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's what it looked like, those salaries. Mm -hmm. And the high school, it's only one class, but it's a lifeguard certification course. Which soon allows them to hire. Yeah. <laughs> Having a lifeguard. That's right. Mm -hmm. did, did the, when the pool was closed down, I mean, there was a couple of years where students didn't get any swimming instruction right there? Correct. Yeah. Okay, so now they all they all are. They all are, and through summer grants last summer, we gifted 240 students with swim, free swim lessons mm -hmm. through a summer grant. So it was great kind of catching up. And how, how much time uh, do they get on lessons each year? I, mean, there was, there was uh, I don't have that, uh, but I do know, and Mrs. Kaplinger's not here, but it's 30 minute, what do you know? So 30 minutes a day for two weeks. Oh, for two weeks, yeah. okay, because it's been one week at one time. I, oh. we, a while back it was three weeks, I mean, mm -hmm. 10 or 15 years ago it was three weeks, but now it's, okay, so it's moving back up. Yeah. Okay. okay um, I was just curious on the, uh, there's only a 2% COLA for staffing, you know, was that negotiated in that 
you know, the max or something like that? Yep. Okay, yep. So. Uh, last year was a 4%, this year is a 3%, next year is a 2%, and next spring we renegotiate with both, con with both unions. Okay. And I mean, ADM, MW, um, I, I didn't quite understand your, your um, statement that there is, it's projected to be 1,006.18, and then um, somehow, then I didn't get, then you have 1,012 for 22, 23. Is that, um, that means we've had that slight enrollment decline? Or, I mean, because your projected is 1,006.18, and the, um, you said this year is 1,012.56. Is that? It's, it's considered held harmless. So um, your ADMW is based on your actual students that are here, the number of students that you have here, and then there's weights. You get weights. Right. So they have those weighted weights in there. Um, if any of that changes, that changes the number um, of, as to what we get paid or what our numbers are. Right. Um, so what the state does then is um, to help you to be able to budget and all that, um, it's called the held harmless. So if your numbers go down, like this next year if we go down, but last year's is higher, we'll get paid at last year's rate because um, it's out of our control and it gives us time to adjust and um, adjust our budgets. And, and then the following year would be based on the... the 1,006 mm -hmm. for, for 24, 25. So, okay. Okay. So, so the state funds on the higher of the last two. Years. Okay. 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 And, and for the 9.9 .9 billion, that's the um, the range so far. You say is 9.9 .9 billion to 10.3 for the state funding. Question for 10.3. Yeah. Okay. We all are. Yeah. And so at uh, the Rainier gets about. 770,000 for what is it, 100 million? Or 100 million. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, and so so there could be um, more money available. Yeah, okay. Now, in, in terms of the capital projects, are those, uh, what are those um, projected to be versus if the um, school levy passes versus if it doesn't pass? Mm -hmm. I mean, because you obviously can't, you know. It won't be sufficient to build a new school to you know, the capital not. expenditures, but are, th are those things that would alleviate some of the problems if we don't get a levy passed? Yeah, absolutely. So that's why we looked to essentially double the, the capital improvement funds. Um, it's looking at some of the issues that we've identified through the facility assessment and plan. It's what um, one of the reasons that the voters are asked are being asked to consider a bond. Um, yeah. 49 million versus whatever the, the total amount is in, in the capital, we're not going to be able to accomplish the same, but we will definitely make it so that we can continue to operate. Yeah. And, I mean, and, and the bond would cover rehabilitating the older buildings to meet the, mm -hmm. the new uh, requirements that they have. Yeah. And just, to, I mean, I know this isn't part of the budget, just this aside, if it does pass, it's going to be an elementary school, correct? Correct. And then the middle school will be the old elementary school. Partially. Partially. So uh, all of the students that are currently in HPE and the HPE modulars would go into a new building. Um, junior high would go into the current HPE as well as district programs, special programs. Uh, we're looking at possibly North Columbia Academy. So that current building will be completely repurposed to meet the needs of the district. And so then we won't have any trailers all over the Correct. campus. Yes. Okay. That's right. <laughs> Yes, quite a trailer park. <laughs> yeah, we're proud of it. <laughs> okay. Okay, are there any other questions right now? I was curious if this bullet point increased athletic budget to overhaul our athletic program. What are we overhauling? Overhaul might be the wrong word, <laughs> but basically what it is is it's honoring some of the enhancements we've made this year, oh. particularly compensating coaches and assistant coaches within the framework that we've developed this year. But it's also looking at things, uh, so one of the um, requests that I made to the athletic director and the principal of the high school was to look at how we can apply um, athletic programs with a, with a better equity lens. So 
Um, one program should not have more access to uniforms uh, programs than another simply because of how much they fundraise. We'd like it to become a thing where fundraising is above and beyond, but the district will enter into kind of a rotation cycle regarding replacing uniforms, um, equipment, all that kind of thing, so that it's that the district has skin in the game also, and it's not just ASB funds. So I guess overhaul does work. <laughs> yeah. And, you, and with the increased supply budgets for music, art, mm -hmm. and other programs, yep. is that line item to now somewhere, or it, it is, it is, it is not? It is not, in, no, we increased supplies uh, per uh, <coughs> elementary and middle school, high school, mm -hmm. but we did not put them in a specific line. So what does it fall, so it's just in the supply, in, what's it fall under? The general fund. The general yeah. fund, but not a specific, no Object specific code. area? Not, it's in object code 410. Okay. So from that, once a budget is approved, then each building principal figures out allocations for their programs, okay. teachers, grade levels, whatever, and okay. they manage that. All right, thank you. And if the elementary school is built, uh, will there be another principal involved? Or will we, the, the um, middle school still have the uh, principal and vice principal they do now? Well, HPE would just have one principal. Right. But you're talking junior, senior, high school. We haven't gone into that level of staffing because the bond obviously would only would not address staffing. So we would then plan accordingly based on the decision of the voters. And would it be possible for us to get copies of the slides that you presented yeah. just so we can look? Yeah. yeah, we'll ask Shawana to send it out Wednesday. We're going to get a job fair tomorrow. But we'll send it out Wednesday morning. Okay. And then we've got until May 1st to. Uh, Send us your questions in. What are they doing with the replacement vehicles? They're you're overhauling your current district fleet. Too. Overhauling every. You're overhauling yeah. every. Okay. <laughs> overhauling. <laughs> we, can, we continue to have unused vehicles throughout this campus. Some mm -hmm. without catalytic converters. Oh, because they get um, stolen. Right. <laughs> um, and so that's been a kind of a long, ongoing goal. Um, but it looks like we're in a position to be able to address that. This oh, okay. Any other comments or questions? Um, and I'll be, I guess the next meeting is uh, set for May 8th at uh, 5 p.m. Okay, so that, I trust uh, everybody will be here. <laughs> okay, and I guess we need to uh, get all our questions in. I mean, I got. You know, I've got to look at the slides and compare, you know, look at the budget and try and figure it out. Uh, just as, since my wife has been so involved in outdoor school over the years, um, I, that's all state funded now, and it's included within the grants part or whatever. Okay. So that's not a okay. And I guess this year was the first overnight one in about two, three years. Yeah. So. Maybe longer, yeah. 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 It's great. Um, well, if nobody has anything else, I'm, I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. I second that. Or do we have to do the motion? <laughs> yeah, I need the motion first. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. Okay, yeah. second.